Hello and welcome to the conversation. Mini. I'm Heil Russell. And I'm Josh Wallen. And Heil, boy, have we got a treat for our listeners today. So, yeah. Generally, Josh, I am not one who is summoned to do a <laughs> conversation mini, right? Generally, mm -hmm. it, it's me, the one who wrangles my co host and says, hey, something relatively minor has happened. Maybe not minor, but something that will not take a full length conversation has happened for us to sure. convene and have a little bit of a chat, a little dollop of discussion, if you will. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you, you, you uh, rang me up or, or, or whatever the equivalent is of our generation uh, a couple days after we did our spotlight episode on Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze, which I recommend everyone listen to before this. And you said, hey, Heil, I think we have a little bit more barrel maze to discuss. And Josh, I am not a sicko who is never going to discuss Donkey Kong Country barrel maze again. Of course. Right. Of course. Of course. I was going to be discussing Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze in the future. I did not expect to be discussing Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze a mere couple of weeks after we just did our big 20th anniversary tie-in spotlight episode for Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze. So this whole situation has me uh, sort of on my heels. I, I don't know what to expect because I was not anticipating going back into this well of, of discussion. Well, especially considering the fact that the aforementioned several weeks ago Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze 20th anniversary spotlight episode was something like three hours long for for a, for a shockwave game. Don't oversell it, Josh. It, 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 it was relatively decent length for the conversation. <laughs> it was long by most other podcast standards. And for the standards of Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze, absolutely, it was excessive. Well, I wanted to try to push us over that three-hour threshold. So I found more to discuss about this game. <gasps> okay, I'm curious because <laughs> I thought we were pretty Thorough. Obviously, we could have gone deeper in depth. We could have described <laughs> every single level in detail. We could have given you a walkthrough. You know, we, we could have done a lot, but it wouldn't have made for a very scintillating conversation. Conversation. It wouldn't have been a good podcast. So I thought we we had a good cutoff, right? And I just don't know how. Well, so we, did I at the time. Yeah, I don't know how we can push this barrel any more than it's already been pushed. Well, well, Heil, um, I thought a lot about how I want to, how I wanted to introduce this concept, how I wanted to put, how I wanted to push this. And I think the best thing to do is to just show you. And then we can discuss the, the, the details of this. So I'm going to be sending you a link and at your convenience, I want you to, I, it, it's a video link at your convenience, oh, okay. I want you to click on it, start watching it, and describe to me what you're seeing. Now, for the benefit of our YouTube listeners, this this video that I'm about to send Heil will be edited into the episode if you're watching on YouTube. However, Heil will be, again, will be describing it, uh, what he sees uh, for our audio-only listeners. Josh is just telling me how to run my show here, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> so... All right, set, send me the link, Josh. And, and when you say length, you, you don't mean the, like, worst hero coin collecting Nintendo hero. You mean uh, no. a link to YouTube. <laughs> a, a hyperlink. Yes, okay. A link who's been overly caffeinated. All right, here we go. So this is, this is a very ambiguous video. It's on Josh's channel. Uh, unlisted, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm clicking it. I'm clicking it. Coco Pebbles Boulder Dash. There's Fred. Oh my god. 
Coco Pebbles Boulder Dash. There is Fred Flintstone on a boulder. And this is a reskinned. Well, it looks like a reskinned level one of Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze. There are Coco Pebbles bowls in place of barrels. Uh, there's a chocolate cocoa river. Oh my god. Fred Fred got Fred got to the end of the level. And and uh, instead of Donkey Kong there, there was his boss. Is it Mr. Slate? His boss at the quarry? Um now we're in level two. Uh, instead of hippos, there are some sort of green dinosaurs coming out of the Coco River. This is exactly Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze, but it's for Coco Pebbles, and Fred Flintstone is rolling around on a boulder. Now, the question is, which came first? Did mm -hmm. did, did the Flintstones Coco Pebbles boulder roll, or whatever this is called, boulder dash? <laughs> boulder dash, that's a pun. Did, did this come before Barrel Maze? Or did this come after Barrel Maze when they lost a Donkey Kong license and they were like, well, we, we have this kick-ass game. Uh, <laughs> and, and we need to do something with it. This is mind, bowl, mind bowling, mind blowing even. Instead of a Neki, there's a Pterodactyl. Maybe that's a Cloud Runner and this can all be connected. Is this DKU? Maybe. Is, is the question. I see no evidence of that so far. <laughs> Uh, this looks like a, just a, a worse version of Barrel Maze, though, because the they, they try to do it in the Flintstones animated style, but it doesn't really work with this isometric, like, like the weird mishmash of visual styles, and, and, um, I don't like it. This is like, uh... I don't like it. This is like a nightmare, honestly, and, uh, I, I sounds like I'm <laughs> shouting right now, it's because I... I'm playing Boulder Dash in my ears, and I'm trying to also communicate what I'm seeing. So now we're in level four. This this is just this is just Josh. I I, I don't I don't like this. This this completely okay. upends everything I thought I knew about reality, and uh, my my faith <laughs> is shaken. My faith in the, uh, the the spiritual underpinnings of the universe. Uh, well, let, let me see. Perhaps I can um, <clears throat> bring you back to reality okay. by, by explaining how how exactly I found this. After our wonderful uh, deep dive on Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze, uh -huh. uh, later that very night, in fact, I found myself obviously wanting to play it. Yes. Uh, wanting to go back to it. Which, as we discussed in the episode, was quite a problem because Shockwave and Macromedia Flash have both are both long dead technologies. So you, you you pretty much have to find an emulator or run a virtual machine. There are ways to do it, but uh, uh, doing a little searching, I was quickly recommended a uh, program called Flashpoint, and Flashpoint is sort of a front end for a bunch of different emulators for different types of like depreciated web uh, technologies. Uh, that sort of compiles a whole bunch of, like, basically every one that's ever been made that, that, that can be found together into one program. And then you just click on whichever one you want, and it, it links it to, it links to a server and downloads it for you. And, and you, like, you, there's different collections, you can search through them. And uh, indeed, Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze is on there and is archived there and is, uh, is completely playable there. But after I played that, after after I experienced the majesty of Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze once again, I found myself wondering, you know, I wonder what Skyworks Technologies got up to other than DKC Barrel Maze. Right. And this program makes it very easy to, to sort games by developer and, and to search based on that. So I looked that up and I quickly... And they, they made a whole bunch of different... Uh, Flash games and, and, and games like this in the early 2000s. But one one in particular caught my eye called, of course, Coco Be Pebbles Boulder Dash! Exclamation point. Yeah. Only one exclamation point, not the two that Double Dash would later have. Well, it doesn't deserve it. It's not that exciting. It doesn't. So I, 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 I find it interesting that 
like me, one of your very first thoughts about what this was, was which came first? Right. Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze or Coco Pebbles Boulder Dash? Because here's the thing, Josh. I feel like the very mm. integrity of the Donkey Kong series <laughs> is at stake here because if there is a full-fledged Donkey Kong game that just ripped off a Flintstones game, not just ripped off a Flintstones game, but ripped off a Flintstones tie-in serial game, then it would just be a blow to my self-esteem and, and just it, it would knock the entire quality metric of the Donkey Kong series down at least by a letter grade. And wow, it, it's bad enough that Donkey Kong's origins are, are effectively a reskinned Popeye, but to reskin a Flintstones Cocoa Pebbles game. Not even Fruity Pebbles, Josh. The superior of the Pebbles, in my opinion. Oh, agreed. Um, agreed. I, I, I don't know what to think. I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous right now. So, wh let, let's discuss where this came from exactly. Uh, there, th This was apparently, and I have no personal memory of this, and, 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 and clearly uh, you don't either. Right. But there was once a website called Postopia, and from what I understand, <clears throat> this website was basically a compilation of a bunch of games like this based on post cereals, Fruity Pebbles, Honeycomb, Oreo O's. There, there were like there's just a, a, a smorgasbord of different uh, sort of adver games, like. Th that are that are represented on here. So, so what you're saying is, po post serial looked at what mm -hmm. Lifesavers was doing with Candy Stand, and they said yes, please. Oh yes. Okay. Um. So, the thing is, as far as I can tell, and then this is the, the, this was the tough part. Okay, this this was because because like I said, the first thing you wonder, which one came first. Postopia in this form with these games, including, as far as I can tell, Boulder Dash, it underwent this change and posted these games in 2003. But that's the same year as Barrel Maze. It's the same year as Barrel Maze, so that that is inconclusive <laughs> as to which came first. <laughs> Coco Pebbles Boulder Dash is, in terms of gameplay, as far as I can tell, Almost the exact same thing as Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze. It uses the same music. It uses the same, uh, uses the same stings. It uses a lot of the same, uh, like, like language in terms of like, you know, wait for like, get ready for the next level or like the game over screen. Yeah. Um, it is a reskinned version of that in nearly every way. Uh, the differences are that. Boulder Dash allows you to play as two different characters. You can, at the very beginning of the game, you can choose to play as either Fred Flintstone or Wilma Flintstone. And of course, as you said, rather than running around, rather than moving a barrel around, you're playing as that character on top of a boulder. I, I think the big, the big difference here is you're physically controlling a beloved member of the Flintstones household it is not a exactly. remote controlled boulder in this case, because let's be honest, there would not be a remote controlled boulder in the era of the Flintstones. It would be a little critter inside a rock exactly. moving it around. And that would just be ludicrous. Now, the gameplay of uh, Coco Pebbles Boulder Dash is is has been changed a little bit to make it a little what, what I would consider to be more difficult, more difficult. Um, more difficult. They looked at Barrel Maze, or and then mm. they said, "You know what, kids' clubs. We we really yeah. need to make this for the elite <laughs> gamers out there." Now it's a it's intentionally a little bit more difficult in that there are sections now where you have to collect. I don't remember exactly <laughs> exactly what you you have to collect items to activate bridges. And you see that at the very beginning of the first level, you have to uh, collect. I don't remember what it is. There's, there's cocoa pebbles boxes. There's various pickup. There's various pickups. You have to collect something to make the bridge uh, substantiate so that, so that you can cross it at the very beginning of the first level. 
but it's more broadly difficult for a couple of reasons. One being that the apparent size of the boulder is much bigger than the barrel was. Yes. So, like, it, it's a little bit harder to, like, dodge things. But the main reason, and the, the, the main reason that I think, regardless of anything else, Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze is the superior way to experience this classic, is just the texturing on the world itself. Um, it's ugly. In, in, the vid- in the video by this point, if it's still playing, we should be getting to, like, a comparison, side-by-side comparison shot of both games. And if you're on YouTube, you'll be able to see that what I'm talking about here. Uh, Coco Pebbles Boulder Dash uses this gray sort of rocky texture for the walls and ceiling and slopes of the entire world, which makes it much, much more difficult to, to like tell relatively where you are on this isometric plane. Whereas Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze uses different ground textures, different floor textures, uh, different grass textures, and therefore it is comparatively much, much easier. Barrel Maze is still a very challenging game, but it is comparatively easier because at least you're not likely to fall into cliffs where you can't tell, like, where you can't tell the ground from the wall. Yeah, it it almost looks like, from from my vantage point, and this is hard, if these were both from the same year, Mm -hmm. I I don't think we can make a conclusive statement on which came first, but I feel like Barrel Maze is the more polished of the two. I feel feel the same, yeah. It's very possible that they they had uh, effectively both games in development at the same time, and they approached Mm -hmm. these projects as, hey, we can make a Flintstones game for Cocoa Pebbles and Postopia, and we can make a, a Donkey Kong game for Candy Stand. And and they're, mm-hmm. they're both using sort of primitive archetypes, um, l- less so for Donkey Kong, but, you know, gorillas living in the jungle, you know, cavemen living in prehistoric times. There's some through line there. You know, we, 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 can, we, can, we can make this concept work across both. So, so there could be parallel development here, and they tweak some things along the way for both, even though I, I would definitely say Barrel Maze is the superior of the two, just looking at them. Sure. Well, after several weeks of, of you know, wondering about this, wondering which one came first, having played both of them today to gather this footage, my read on the situation and I'm, I promise I'm, I I came to this conclusion before I heard before I knew that this was threatening to upend the 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 existential stability of my friend Heil yes but yes. my but my guess is that Barrel Maze came first okay and the reason for that is for one thing the general vi- the general aesthetics of the game make so much more sense for Barrel Maze. Whereas in uh, in, in Boulder Dash, in Coco Pebbles Boulder Dash, to use its full title, uh, everything feels much more like it was like sort of hastily thrown together. The ri- the rivers in Boulder Dash are like this, this very cartoony sort of looping animation of chocolate. Um... And, and again, the ground and, and ramp textures are so much more unrefined, which makes me think that the, you know, you, you like you said, you would think perhaps that the more polished of the two would be the one that came second. But I actually don't think so, because the 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 assets in Barrel Maze fit Barrel Maze so much better. But the main thing and the, the bigger reason I think that is because while I was playing uh, Boulder Dash today, I made it to level 5 for the first time, and in fact, that's as far as I did make it. And level 5 features is the level that, is the first level that features the pre-rendered palm trees, as well as the, the, the big uh, the big purple plant that leans down and, and takes a bite out of the barrel slash the boulder. And these assets are exactly the same between the two games. Oh my god. And the, they, like, they fit the aesthetic of Barrel Maze, right? Right. They fit the they fit the aesthetic of Donkey Kong Country, for that matter. But 
they look extremely out of place, not just in terms of the Flintstones, but in the world of Coco Pebbles Boulder Dash. And for these reasons, my my belief, I, ca I can't prove this one way or another, but I believe that Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze came first. This is, for, for one thing, I cannot believe mm -hmm. Skyworks Technologies would be so lazy as to simply reskin a pre-existing game <laughs> and sell it to another <laughs> license. It, it just, everything I know about them, uh, it, it, it just completely betrays my trust. Another thing is that for all of the people out there, Freezer, I, I see you listening to us right now. All the people who say, hey, the rare cow should make a game automatically part of the DKU. Because even though it is not a specific character, it is a species type that should mm -hmm. still grant something DKU status. And to that oh. I say, if uh, Coco Pebbles Boulder Dash did indeed come second, then this would be the second canonical appearance of the Chomp Plant that would, of uh -huh. course, later resurface in Donkey Kong Country Returns, which would, in fact, make Coco Pebbles Boulder Dash part of the Donkey Kong universe. And do we really want that on our conscience? I don't think so. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. <laughs> Nor would I, Heil. So, yeah. <laughs> um... I, I was briefly wondering if it was even a good idea to have presented you with this, but ultimately the the thought of being able to show you, to show you something so closely related to a DKU game that I didn't think you had ever heard about, because I felt like if you knew about this, you would have talked about it 20 years ago, and you definitely would have talked about it during our extremely in-depth conversation. So the, 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 the experience of getting to introduce something new to you was was the reason that I wanted to do this episode. I I appreciate it, Josh. And now I think uh, the the only logical path forward for us mm -hmm. is to begin an immediate petition to reskin post Pebble brand cereals into Donkey Kong brand cereals because turnabout is fair play. And if sure. If uh, Fred and Wilma got away with this 20 years ago, then it's time to pay up. It's time to pay it <laughs> forward and give us something in return. And I think the only fair thing to do is give us fruity pebbles. And, and we, we, we can have a discussion with Post and Nintendo about how we would rebrand fruity pebbles into a Donkey Kong themed cereal. But... I, I think we we start now. This needs to be our goal for 2024. Our New Year's resolution, <laughs> if you will, is to bring down the Flintstones empire. If we can't get Fruity Pebbles, maybe we can at least get those vitamins. Uh, I, I, I want something from their oddly persistent 60-year-old food empire. And uh, I, I, I think the time is now, now that we have this evidence. Well, speaking of the time as now, that reminds me um, of another controversial internet entity, like, uh, another person who was controversial on the internet who managed to work what was initially a joke into a brand deal with Post Serials, that being John Cena, who appeared on the box of Fruity Pebbles. Uh, if not that, if, if the DKU cannot entirely take over Post Serials, then would you, ex would you accept a brand deal for, for instance, the Donkey Kong Country theme park to be promoted via post serials, which may, in fact, give us a vector for Donkey Kong Country Barrel Maze to make a triumphant return to the Internet in an official capacity. Yes. Yes, I, yes, I okay. would. I, th that, that would be acceptable to me because I'm not so greedy and so terrible that I would actually want to snatch away a pillar of the Flintstones fan community. Like, sure. I, cause I'm sure they judge a lot of their own self-worth based on the fact that they have not one, but two 
long-running cereals on store shelves. And <laughs> just to say, like, I'll take one of those, thank you. I mean, let's let's be fair. Like, the, the, the Flintstones, they already lost their cigarette deal back when, you know, smoking <laughs> stopped being cool. So mm-hmm. let them have their cereal. We, we can at least get a little plug from it, though. I, I think we're owed that. We are owed that. And then from there, we can look for our own, you know, corners of, of the food market. Sure. Let, let's let's go that route. All right. We'll, 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 we'll make sure that we set up the petition before too long. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so play, playing Boulder Dash was, was certainly an interesting experience. The main thing that, of course, came to my mind was, while in most ways, by the way, I like in Boulder Dash the... The the back in the background the background appears to be exactly the same in both games except uh, that in 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 Coco Pebbles Boulder Dash a smiling purple dinosaur who does not move with the background has been edited to be uh, in the blue sky back there. It looks but, so uh, bad, yeah. It it looks very very strange. But the the of course the main thing that. The, the main the main thing that I think is superior about Boulder Dash, and the only thing, is the choice of playable characters. And of course, that got me thinking. You know, how much cooler would 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 Barrel Mace have been if, in fact, you played as either DK or Diddy, uh, perhaps even riding on top of the barrel? Yeah, but they could only really ride on a steel keg, and then it would be Donkey well, Kong Country Keg Maze, <laughs> which which is a completely different kind of game. No, that sounds like a vagina exercise. Oh, oh, oh I'm uh, hungry. Santa, my pebbles! Your pebbles? Tis the season to be sharing, Fred. Happy holidays, pal. Oh, Fred. Fruity and Cocoa Pebbles cereals, part of this nutritious oh, breakfast. Oh, oh. This has been a File 2 production. Qué rico.